Today is Pentecost Sunday. Many years ago, there was a young boy who was taken for the first time to the school by his mother. And as his mother left him at the gate of the school so that he could move in, the boy began to cry. His mother did not know how to pacify him and he kept clinging to his mother. His mother bent down, whispered in her son's ear, Goodbye, my love. No one is leaving. The boy was too young to understand the paradox. Goodbye and no one is leaving. How is that possible? But the boy took into his mind these words, no one is leaving and with courage went into the school. Every day for the first week, his mother would reach him at the entrance of the school, bend down and whisper in his ear, Goodbye, my love. No one is leaving. As time went by, the boy became a man. And his mother grew old. And the boy had to go to work and leave his mother at home. And the moment the boy began to dress up, this young man now began to dress up in order to be able to go to work, his mother would look at him with alarm, with fear in her eyes. And the boy now would kneel down in his mother's, near his mother's wheelchair and whisper in her ear, Goodbye, my love. No one is leaving. And the mother's face would brighten up and she would be able to manage the whole day without her son. The same words, goodbye my love, no one is leaving, are spoken by Jesus in the feast of today that he promised that he would send the Holy Spirit. The feast of Pentecost is a feast of the Holy Spirit and there are two themes which are prominent in this feast. And the first is this apparent paradox between saying goodbye to the disciples and not leaving. In this case, it is true that the Lord has gone away and said goodbye, but it is also true that the Lord has not left. The Lord is present with us. The Lord is in our midst and the Lord made sure that he would be in our midst, that he would remain with us by sending whom he called the paraclete. The English word paraclete comes from the Greek parakletos, which means someone who is called near and especially at the time of trial especially at the time of judgment, to be an aid, to be a helper, to be a counselor, to be an advocate. And therefore, these are all names for the Holy Spirit. The Lord realized that it would be a challenge for the disciples to manage without him. The Lord realized that he had to go back to the Father to sit at the right hand of the Father, but the Father, all, the God also knew through Jesus that he could provide an aid, a help, a counselor, a helper, a paraclete for the disciples. And this is what we celebrate on the Feast of Pentecost. In the Gospel text of today, chosen from the Gospel of John chapter 20, verses 19 to 23, Jesus appears to his disciples after the resurrection. The doors are closed. It is an unwelcoming scene because the disciples are afraid. And the reason why the disciples are afraid is because they are now headless. They are now leaderless. Their leader has died and been laid in the tomb. Little do they know that he has been raised 
And the risen Jesus now appears to them. Even though the doors are closed, they are no hindrance for the risen Christ. And so he comes and stands in their midst. And what does he do when he gives them the gift? He gives them first the gift of peace. When he says, peace be with you, he is not merely wishing them peace, but he is gifting the same peace which he received from the Father to his disciples. And this peace is a peace of wholeness. A peace which encompasses every single area of a person's life. A peace which is complete. A peace which brings a person to be that person that he or she must be. And even as they are de delighted, he gives them a commission. And the commission is, as the Father has sent him, so he is sending the disciples. And when he gives them this commission, he breathes on them again and gives them a second time, now specifically for the commission, the gift of peace. And the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit is given to them through the breath of Jesus. Like God breathed life into the first human being. That God made the first human being a living creation by breathing his breath into the human being. So now Jesus breathes his breath into the disciples so that they become now a fearless group. They become now a group which will make him known. And that is why in the first reading of today, chosen from the Acts of the Apostles, we are told about this bravery. We are told that the Holy Spirit which Jesus gave came as wind, as a rush of force. It came unobtrusively. It came without being seen, but it came in a very, very tangible manner. And unity in diversity is the second theme of Pentecost because here, when the disciples begin to speak about God's love, every single person from different areas of life, from different nationalities, from different languages could understand what the disciples said in their own language. And this is what the Spirit does. The Spirit brings about unity even in our diversity. The Spirit is not a spirit of uniformity. The Spirit is a spirit of unity. And that is why it is good that we can be different. That we can be of different colors. That we can be of different creeds. That we can be of different shades. We can be of different religions. It does not matter. What matters is that each one of us who receives the spirit of the risen Lord, who receives the spirit of the risen Christ, is communicating that spirit of love. The Hebrew word ruach is translated in English as spirit. And this is what the spirit is. The spirit is unobtrusive. The spirit does not interfere. The spirit does not come in the way. The spirit only helps. The spirit only aids. The spirit only comes when we call on the spirit. Today, on this feast of Pentecost, when there is so much of division, even though we say we live in a global village, we have never been as apart as we are today. The call of Pentecost is a call to this unity even in diversity. Pentecost is saying that it is okay and even good that we are different from each other. There is no problem if we worship God in a different language, in a different way, in a different tongue. It does not matter. What matters is that we speak and communicate constantly the words of the Spirit. The words of the Lord, the words of the Father, which are words of unconditional love. If we do that, then we will have celebrated Pentecost in the manner in which it is to be celebrated, bringing together the whole of humanity and with Jesus reconciling the world to God. 
Jesus was sent with this one mandate which he fulfilled in his lifetime of reconciling everyone, including nature, to God. This is the mandate which we receive today on the Feast of Pentecost. That we realize that even though we are different, it does not matter if others are different. What is important is that the Spirit brings us all together in a spirit of unconditional love. A happy Feast of Pentecost to everyone.